Oh, I need to add my lower third to this one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first of three town hall meetings with your PBL state president. My name is Bo Cobb, and I proudly serve as the Phi Beta Lambda national president for the 2014-2015 year. I just want to start off by saying that it's an amazing conference season, and we're going to talk about the National Fall Leadership Conferences coming up, but let's meet your state president, starting with the Arkansas state president. Over to you. Oh, wow. Arkansas state. Robert, can you hear us? All right. Well, Robert's, experiencing, Robert's experiencing technical difficulties. Both human resources. Yes. Can you hear me? Not well. I can't hear you that well. So, Robert, while we're dealing with your technical difficulties, we'll move on over to Dylan from Arizona. Hi. Thanks, Bo. My name's Dylan Downhill. I'm the state president for Arizona. I currently go to Northern Arizona University. My second year of PBL, and I'm really excited. This is my final year studying for a Bachelor of Business Administration with a management emphasis. And you asked which NFLC we're going to. I won't. Instead, we have a state FLC, which is happening this Saturday. I'll be going to that instead. Awesome. Sounds good, Jalen. And Robert, can you hear us now? All right. Then we will move on over to our next state president. From New Jersey, Frank Kellogg. Hi, everyone. My name is Frank Kellogg from New Jersey. Uh, I currently attend Ryder University. I've been involved with FBLA PBL for four years, and I am an accounting major. And I will be attending the NFLC in Washington, D.C. Hope to see you all there. Awesome. I hear that D.C. is going to be a great conference. Yeah. Now we're going to move on over to your North Carolina representative. Hello, my name is Chuck Van Hoos. I'm the North Carolina State PBO president. Um, I go to Stanley Community College where I plan to transfer um, to be a business administration uh, major. And I've been in FB, FBLA PBO for eight years now, and I plan to go to Washington, D.C. Nice. Will the North Carolina delegation be represented at the D.C. conference this year? Um, only myself and my state advisors, as far as I know, I'm going. There might be a few other schools going, but I haven't heard anything. Awesome. All right, let's move on over to our next state representative from Virginia. Hi, everybody. My name is Nicholas Western, and I am a state officer with Virginia Phi Beta Lambda. I'll be attending the National Fall Leadership Conference in Washington, D.C. Um, in November, and I am a student at the University of Virginia. Nice. And your state president from Pennsylvania. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Desmond. I am the state president from Pennsylvania. Um, I currently attend the University of Pittsburgh where I am a junior majoring in marketing, supply chain management, and business information systems. Uh, I'm, this is now the seventh year of involvement for me in FBLA PBL and Pennsylvania will be attending several of our chapters along with several of our state officers will be at the Washington DC NFLC next month. So we'll see you all there. Awesome. And Robert, can we hear you now? Can you hear me yes. now, Bo? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. All right. Well, when Robert comes back with, once we can hear more clearly, we'll have him introduce himself. But Robert does proudly serve as the Arkansas Phi Beta Lambda State President for the 2014-15 year. And I know that 
I believe that Arkansas will be attending the NFL C in New Orleans the last time that I checked. So I can't wait to see you all in NOLA. So in just a few minutes, we're going to have Tom Payne, 5 Beta Lambda membership director, join us. He's going to be here for all of your thoughts and all of that good stuff. But for all of you tuning in live right now, it's not too late to register for the NFL C in New Orleans. You can join myself, EBL National Treasurer, Karthik Krishnan, EBL Southern Region Vice President Travis London, as well as Ian Mullane from the FBLA National Officer Team. All right, so before Tom comes, um, we'll just start around with state updates um, from the, the presidents. So about your conferences that have been going on, I know that a lot of you all I've seen on social media have had a great events going on, but I want you all to share more with us. So why don't we start with Andrew? Okay. Uh, well, we just, uh, in Pennsylvania, had our state fall organization orientations this past weekend. Uh, they went astoundingly well. We have two going on just for geographical reasons. We had one in the east side of Pennsylvania at Montgomery County Community College, and we had uh, the one in the west with the University of Pittsburgh that hosted us very graciously, and they both went very well. We had about 30 attendees at each of the conferences and uh, a great praise, uh, great public speakers, um, great keynotes, and really uh, we spoke a lot about some of the updates that we had going on uh, um, and what we've been working on at the state level. And in terms of other state initiatives that we've been pushing, uh, I know we've been working very hard on getting some uh, F joint FBLA PBL events going this year. Uh, we have two of them that are gotten the ball rolling and we're working on a third, so we're really excited about getting those up and off the ground. Nice. What would you say was your favorite part of the Pennsylvania conference, the Pennsylvania Fall Series? I, I would have to say that the the best part for my, my personal benefit was uh, the different workshops that we held. Uh, we had a fantastic workshop hosted by uh, one of our alumni uh, from Pennsylvania PBL, Ben Grabowski. He works at Ernst & Young, um, and he talked about the first 90 days on the job and getting your, through your interview and, and everything, um, and that was a fantastic workshop. And we also had uh, Dr. Saletti from Duquesne University speak about personal branding, and those were both very, very valuable workshops, um, and I know everyone that was attending got a lot out of them, so... That was probably by far the, the best experience that we had at the conference last, last week. Awesome. Um, speaking about workshops like that, just a personal plug from the national level. For those of you that will be attending the NFLC in New Orleans, there will be the PBL Pathways program. That's going to have a lot of workshops, just like you said, the first 50 days on the job to building credit from professionals from around the country. So. Those tuning in, don't forget about the NFLC and NOLA with me and Karthik and Travis. But DC is going to be a blast, too, in so Minneapolis. Thanks, Andrew. All yeah, right, Chuck, yeah. do you want to tell us about your state fall conference season? All right, our state conference or fall leadership conference, great. We had the privilege of having Bo there. That was a lot of fun. Got a lot of ideas from him. He had some great workshops. Um, we had about 100 people there, I think. Um, our numbers were a little down because we had to move it so soon. We didn't want to have it the weekend before D.C. You know, some conflicts with the hotel. But it went well. The state officers, um, our team is, we're trying to heavily promote social media. And we hosted a workshop about social media, tell chapters, you know, promote themselves, promote PBL. And Bo was able to give some insight on Google Hangout and a few other social media that he, he uses. So it went pretty well. And Bo, thank you again for attending. Oh, Thank you so much, North Carolina, for having me. Um, what would you say is something different that North Carolina does, or a state tradition? Because I saw several, but I'll let you share them. I'll give you a hint. It was in the hallway. Uh, one of the cool things we do is we do a recruitment booth competition. Um, if you have a recruitment booth at school, that's one way to get um, your name out there. But for North Carolina, we have Bo judged, and we have a few of our PDF members judge for who has the best recruitment display, and Stanley Community College won this year. 
So that's pretty neat, and it's another way to have a competition. Yeah, I um, it's a pretty cool competition. Um, it was definitely very awesome to see these like epic recruitment posters all over North Carolina in the hallway, and you know, take a few selfies with them. All right, Dylan. Do you have any updates on any conferences in Arizona or any plans for conferences? Yeah, we have the full leadership conference happening this Saturday. It's being hosted by NAU, my own chapter. We have about 40 people coming from various colleges around the state. We have people from Flagstaff and up from Tucson, the Phoenix area. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We've got an icebreaker. We have the three competition sessions, of course. We have a training session for chapter leaders, and that's being hosted by John Grisham, who was last year's state president. And we also have a GEICO representative doing a leadership uh, speech presentation. So we're all looking so forward what to would that. You say, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of planning a conference and how you and your team have been working on it? Because I've planned several, and... I'm sure that we're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think at this stage, it's just getting people to commit to coming. We're just waiting for the registration forms to come in. Uh, we, it, uh, so much depends on the registration forms that we have, like food, name badges, how many judges you need, and it's all very last minute now, which if anyone's got registration forms, send them in early. The people who are organizing the conference will appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful fall leadership series and a wonderful conference season. Um, and then just a shout out, though, to all tuning in. You all do have the opportunity to invite a national officer to attend your conferences. And all that you have to do is your state advisor puts in the request form. If you do have a state with a national officer, um, you will most likely have that national officer at your conference, Andrew. Um, all right, so let's move on over to Frank from New Jersey to talk to us about New Jersey and all of their awesome fall leadership things. I've seen it all over Facebook. Absolutely, well, yes. Um, so our state fall leadership conference was last Friday, October 17th. We had uh, Kyle Shealy, who is a motivational speaker and professional beer grower, uh, and that's on his website. He was an awesome person to listen to. A professional beer grower. Like beard? Yeah, like a, <laughs> a beard. So, yeah, we had Aaron who spoke at our SFLC and also led a workshop. Uh, me, um, Devon McCurry, our state vice president, and Danielle Whitman, our state membership director, we led a, a very interactive workshop with the FBLA kids uh, where we kind of took the, the spin off of, you know, uh, not just joining PBL, but how to transition into college. And that went really well. We thought that made a good impression for the FBLA students coming into PBL, hopefully. Uh, and just a little quick thing you guys might want to try. We had a little a tie time contest. So uh, we did that in the beginning as a little icebreaker if you guys want to do that. Other than that, we have a lot of great things planned. We have some chapters opening up and some conferences uh, and a little surprise hopefully I'll have at the next state president town hall. And that's it for New Jersey. Awesome. Um... Then just another little personal plug. The membership director for FBLA, PBL, Lisa Smothers, is always, always, always pushing the national officers to do a workshop on how to tie the scarves and the ties. So that's pretty cool that you um, that you did that. I'm sure that Ms. Smothers is excited to hear about that. I Maybe the national know. officers will do it one day. All right. Thanks for sharing, Frank. Let's move on over to your Virginia FBLA. Your Virginia PBL state officer, Nick Weston. Well, um, hi guys. Um, it's been uh, unfortunately we don't have a, a state fall conference here in Virginia for we've, uh, but that doesn't mean we haven't been active. We've uh, been more active than ever. Um, our membership numbers are way up. Uh, we've recruited a, a, a great number of new chapters, um, and it's just uh, it's just looking really great here uh, for Virginia Phi Beta Lambda. Um, we've been we've been reaching out to our local chapters and and members both new and old um, to 
to uh, to motivate them and involve them in, in our organization. And uh, additionally, we've been reaching out to uh, those at the high school level to encourage them to encourage them to join um, our collegiate division when they get to that level. Um, a couple weeks ago, one of our other state officers, Julianne Veloso, gave an amazing workshop at one of our um, high school uh, regional fall conferences. And that, um, that went really well. I heard amazing reviews uh, about that workshop. Um, but all in all, it's, it's, um, it's going really well here. Um, we're gearing up for our state leadership conference in March, and um, all in all, it's just been, uh, it has been a really great year, and it's going to continue to be. Awesome, Nick. And then just on a personal note, last year I had the opportunity to attend the Virginia PBL conference, and I know that whenever you do conferences, you all do them big. So, so we do. A big shout we do. Out that to is definitely true. Well. A big shout out to your state advisor, Ms. Mills, and the yes, she does, Foundation. She does an amazing job, and the foundation is, is always there to support us, and we love it. Awesome. We might be able to talk about your foundation later on in the call. Is Robert from Arkansas here? Okay. So. Uh, um, I do want to go over just a few important things about the National Fall Leadership Conferences before we move on into our next. Um, we do have some important dates coming up. Please make sure to look on the website, which is www.fbla-pbl.org. In the conference section and even in the calendar section on the home page, you'll see all of the important dates. Like I said, today is the deadline for the NFLC New Orleans Early Bird. Even if you don't get it in tonight, we can still register you tomorrow and even on site. So, Secondly, um, there is a dress code for all official conferences to all of the members watching this. You can find that on the website as well. And state officers, state presidents, I'm really excited to talk to you about this. This is the second year for the annual state officer track, which is exclusive for all state officers, not just state presidents, at a National Fall Leadership Conference. So if you or your teams have not registered for a state officer track, please do so as soon as possible. Your state advisor has the information. Um, and then this would also just be time to kind of open it up to you guys of what you would like to see at the state officer track. Andrew? Uh, I think personally I would, I would like to see um, things uh, Discussions and ideas about different professional development kind mm -hmm. of workshops and mm -hmm. push those really, really heavily. Um, I know that's something that's been done in some of our local chapters. That's something we've been really trying to push with uh, some success, but I know it's something that can really benefit, and that's what we should be doing as an organization is trying to develop all of our members professionally and uh, get them ready for the job market. So um, that would be something that I would really like to see. Awesome. So more about getting in touch with your professional division. That way they can help you doing these workshops. Is that kind of what you're going in line with? I, I think that's that can be part of it, definitely. Um, and expanding and recruiting for the professional division. I know that's um, they would always appreciate the help from PBL grads um, and PBL members to, to register after graduation um, and utilize their resources as well. But more so um, just any kind of a, a professional development workshop or getting different ideas for events that we can help some of our uh, local chapters to be able to sponsor and put on themselves to provide value at the local level um, and be able to have regular events going and bringing in some speakers and um, getting more workshops and again providing value and doing things um, not only at the state level but also um, having us be able to help the the local chapters. Awesome. Uh, well, this is being recorded, so my awesome officer team and me will go back over all of your statements. Um, but thank you for sharing that. We will definitely take in anything that you state officers want us to train you on and get as many materials out to you, because it's hard to believe that DC is just, I believe, two weeks two, away. Two weeks. Two weeks. I believe. It might be three. Yeah. Um, 
which is wild. That conference season is in full swing. All right. Let's move on over to North Carolina with Chucky. Uh, one thing I'd like to see is to learn better ways to connect with um, high school chapters. Even at PBO, um, I think in my area, my high school is one of the only FBLA chapters around. So just a better way to connect with high schools and an easy way to connect with it. So for all of you FBLA members that are tuning in live right now, PBL does want to work with you. So awesome. So we can definitely work towards promoting lifetime division and organization and some recruitment tactics and do some brainstorming as a team. Yeah, one way I'm working on that now is I've actually just recently been asked to bring greetings at um, the FBLA State Leadership Conference next year. And also I might be presenting a workshop on social media, probably slash PBL involvement. So I hope that goes well and I hope I get to do that. Nice. Well, good luck with teaching and speaking to our high school counterparts. Okay. Dylan, are there any skills that you wish that you had trained as a state officer from us? I, too, would uh, I'd like to say that connecting with the FBLA high schools would be more good uh, instructions or uh, things to say or even like a PowerPoint or something that we can go with into the high schools and give them a five ten minute talk about PBL, tell them that their FBLA experience isn't over when they, they leave high school. Mm -hmm. We are going to the Flex conference, which will be in about three, four weeks' time, and we will we'll have a session there for the high schoolers. But if we had a, something to go into individual schools and, and present, that would be good too. Nice. So what is the Flex conference? Can you... Uh, Flex Conference is the FBLA uh, conference they have. Um, it's going to be held at the Phoenix Convention Center, I believe. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> and they, uh, there's about 5,000 members in FBLA in Arizona. And we'd like to get in front of them and tell them that they can join PBL. That should help membership come next year and the year after. They will know to look out for PBL and because when it, once it gets to college, there are a lot more choices of business clubs. We want to show them why they should join PBL compared to joining other clubs that may exist. Awesome. So after hearing these two people, I can already tell promoting division relations is going to be something key at our training. Thank you, Dylan, for sharing. And I hope you have an awesome time at the Arizona conference. Phoenix is always a beautiful city to visit. All right. Frank Kellogg from New Jersey. Yes. What do you want to learn at state officer training? Or, yes. Right, so it will be sort of echoing what some of the other state presidents said. Uh, I especially like the fact of um, reaching out to the professional division. Uh, that's definitely something I want to look into personally. So if I know, I know that if I want to look, out, look, uh, look to the professional division personally, I know that other state presidents probably do as well. A lot of times we focus on our relationship with FBLA, which is great. And here in New Jersey, it's, it's really working well. We have a strong camaraderie with our FBLA chapter. Uh, but I would like to see some more on the professional division uh, at our state officer track. Maybe if we could get a couple of members from the professional division to come in and share some of their experiences with us, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that, New Jersey PD members that are tuning in live? <laughs> Awesome. Are there any other skills, though, that you would like to develop or have your national officers focus on? Because you'll be with Tori and Ariel. And I like how it was, is this question still for me? Yeah. OK, I do like how it went last year. You know, last year was very interactive, so they keep the interactivity mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. on it. And um, you know, the little games, because believe it or not, the, the little games that we do, the drawing, uh, Tori, your partner, things like that. In fact, that's actually where I met Nick Western, and uh, happy to yeah, see exactly. you all now. So, keeping those interactivity, um, interactive icebreakers up is very helpful. So, if we keep that up, it'll be good. Yeah, I agree with Frank with icebreakers. Um, it helped a lot. I think I met Frank with an icebreaker during IFL. That's right. So, mm -hmm. They help a lot. I know, really good icebreaker that anybody that's ever been around me. 
knows what it is, but I won't reveal that to all of you tuning in live. Can't uh. wait to see you in New Orleans. Um, all right, so moving on over to Nick Western, a Virginia PBL state officer. Um, well, for me, I really think uh, communication, focusing on on how we can reach out as state officers, how we can reach out to um, members both in existing chapters and new chapters to make sure that they are getting the most out of their organization because that's our job as, um, as state officers, to make sure that our members are getting the, getting the value for the dues they pay. Um, so so social media and... Like I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you feel like it's important to go over social media tips and tricks with state officers, or would you like something more in-depth? Um, because thinking, I've read a few reviews. I want to make sure that we're using your right. time the wisest. Right, right. Um, I'm really thinking um, just the most effective strategies how to use it. Um, kind of not necessarily, oh, this is Facebook, this is Twitter, this is the something more advanced than that. So, like, um, actually making out the calendar and the strategic social media plan? Yeah, because it's, um, what we found here in Virginia is that social media has an amazing amount of power, but it only has that amazing amount of power if you use it, and if you use it effectively. So, um, it's really, you've got to, you've got to unlock that power somehow, and you've got to find that key to, um, to make sure that, that uh, it's successful. Awesome. Um, and then just a shout out, speaking about social media and its power, a shout out to Massachusetts FBLA PBL State Advisor Blake Reynolds, for currently Blake is launching a 5 Ada Lambda campaign through Facebook and Twitter, marketing towards those audiences and generating COP requests. A COP request, for all of you that do not know, it's a chapter organization packet. So you can tell all of your friends that don't have PBL chapters to go fill out a COP request, and one of my eight awesome national officers will get back to you ASA. So yeah, great. All right, moving forward. Is there anything else uh, that somebody's thought of throughout this conversation of what they would like to see at the state officer track that their team would benefit for me? Um, I really think. Um uh, some sort of networking, like we all we all pool our, our contact information, or or so uh, so on and f so forth. We all we all trade business cards, but there's some of us you, you lose business cards or whatever. So possibly sh um, possibly a Google Doc or something mm -hmm. um, with everyone's contact information on it. So I could reach out to I don't know Georgia PBL if they if I knew they had a, they had some a good idea or um, and they didn't get his business card. Um, so I could reach out to him. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. That was something that we talked pretty extensively about, a few of us at IFL mm -hmm. um, this past summer, and we felt that we've got all of these great resources in a lot of great states um, and state officer and leadership teams that are really, really um, active and have a lot of mm -hmm. passion for the organization, have a lot of great ideas, um, but communicating state to state has been kind of difficult trying to get, keep everyone's right. contact information. Right. I was only able to get so many people. I would love to be able to talk to Candace down in uh, Georgia, but also be able to talk to Frank in uh, New Jersey, but then there's all these other state officers that I know have great ideas, um, but I'd like to have right. some kind right. of a, a way to contact them, and not just at NFLC, but also after the fact and, and have some kind of a database or something. Right. Like yeah, I agree with Andrew and Nick. Like having um, more communication between the state officers, that would be great. I know Nick, Nick, you were talking about trying to get more involved in social media. Um, North Carolina has been doing that a lot. Um, so if any of y'all need any help, or right. just, you can email me, and I can get, tell you what North Carolina has been doing with social media. So feel free to ask me anything about right. that. Just for all of the state officers that are cheering on your state presidents and state representatives well, right in now. In Virginia, we've... Give me just one. Hello? Um, there is an, a PBL state officer boardroom on Facebook that is used as a tool for you all to communicate with each other and these town mm -hmm. halls. Just for those that are tuning in live right now, this is the PBL president town hall. There will be another one in January where all presidents will be able to attend the Hangout because we'll be doing it through GoToWebinar. 
So there'll be a limitless amount of people that can attend that hangout, so it'll be really cool. Anyway, back to what you were saying, Nick. Oh, um, I'm, uh, we've been doing a really good job stepping up our social media um, here in Virginia um, for both both our high school and our um, our collegiate level. But it's just a um, it, it's it's a hard path it's a hard path to uh, to endure when you're trying to figure out when should I post, what should I post, how should I post, how how can I encourage people to like the page to especially people who it actually applies to. You could invite a million people to like your page, but if they're not FBLA PBL members, it's not really going to matter because you're not reaching out to um, to your members. Um, so that's it's just been it's it's been a um, it's been a tricky path um, establishing our social media presence. Well, I can completely agree. Yeah. Speaking of social media. Feel free, if you have any questions for any of these awesome state presidents or myself, to tweet at NatPBLPres throughout the duration of this webinar. Can we hear Robert now? Robert. Okay, moving forward. All right, so the next thing on our agenda tonight is going to be about service. So, unfortunately, um, a person ended up having to cancel. So, I'm just going to give you all a brief update about our national youth service partner, the March of Dimes. So, for all of you that don't know, for over 43 years, FBLA PBL has proudly partnered with the March of Dimes, raising over $15 million for premature babies. Um, just a few weeks ago, so almost a month ago, um, I traveled to Dillon Downhill's awesome state of Arizona for the March of Dimes Volunteer Leadership Conference in Phoenix. And we took home the title yet again as their largest youth service partner. So major props to all of you watching and to all of you state presidents that are helping save babies. Um, while we were at that conference, we actually got to go tour NICU, FBLA National President Sam Kessler and I. And if you haven't toured a NICU, I challenge you to with your chapters during November because you can see where your money is mm -hmm. truly going. Um, overall, don't forget that just in a few days, Prematurity Awareness Month starts. So get your campuses purple, get your states purple. You know, if I raise $800, my hair will be purple. So feel free to go <laughs> donate to my page. Um, that's a personal. Or donate to any of the national officers' pages. I like that. Well. Right, no doubt. Uh, did you like how I snuck that one in really quick? Yeah. All right. Shameless plug. There we go. <laughs> that is thebocop at marchforbabies.org. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so... Since we've already talked about our national service partner, I want to hear more about the state service partners that we have here. So why don't we start off with Nick Western. Um, well, here in Virginia, we have two different state service partners. Um, our our um, really charitable charitable foundation that we, we support is um, the Ask Childhood Cancer Foundation. And since uh, 1982, Virginia FBLA PBL has donated over a million dollars to um, help this Virginia-based um, hospital care for um, care for kids with cancer and help them through more of the emotional um, aspects of, of cancer. So they'll the, we will buy them toys and and gift cards to help them to help them uh, through uh, through cancer. Um, and our other uh, our other um, service partners, the Virginia FBLA PBL Foundation which um, we actually met last month, the, the board met last month, and um, what the foundation does, um, foundation has, a, has an ever-growing fund of, of money to um, help fund, um, fund leadership development activities, scholarships, and member, uh, of a chapter that, um, that is, uh, has joined the foundation they um, will receive a stipend to attend the National Leadership Conference if they've placed first and second at the state or um, at the state leadership conference. 
Um, additionally, we f um, they fund three $1,000 scholarships for graduating FBLA members and a number of scholarships for PBL members um, to, to help them through their education. Um, and actually new this past year was um, our leadership, our, um, our Foundation Leadership Institute at the High School State Leadership Conference. And that is um, an intensive leadership development seminar um, and that, that worked with a very small group of really talented, really special underclassmen to get them more involved in our organization, to really create that special experience for them. Um, and I had the I had the the opportunity to work with that, um, work with that, get it off the ground, and our uh, our first year it was amazing. Um, so really, the foundation, the the Virginia FBLA PBL Foundation, does so much for for our organization. They not only not only do they fund all of those, they also fund a number of stipends for for our state staff. Um, so we're able to have uh, a number of programs because of them. Um, and it's um, it's looking like uh, it's it's clear skies ahead for for FBLA PBL in Virginia and and for our foundation um, because of the foundation support. Awesome. And just again, thank you, Miss Mills and Mr. Mills, for your dedication to FBLA PBL. Uh, for those of you that don't know them, do some googling. They've been awesome contributors, just like all of our state advisors have been. So. Let's move on to Frank. Do you want to tell us about your state service partner? Right. So what we usually do, um, usually past years, we stuck with the March of Dimes. However, uh, in the, for example, last year we uh, worked with Embrace Kids, which I don't know if many of you have heard of, but uh, they do also work with kids with cancer. And we actually hope to uh, maintain communication with them and work with them again, and hopefully at our state leadership conference, uh, perhaps have them involved and, and, and work on something like that. We actually uh, have a little bit different of a spin this year um, as far as the March of Dimes. Because usually our local chapters uh, do a pretty good job raising the money. So our whole thing is to uh, I guess unify the reporting of what they raise in all of their uh, activities with the March of Dimes. And we're going to compile that at the end of our year. And that's what we have. Awesome, Frank. Thank you. All right, Dylan, does your state have a service project? We, we tend to work with the March of Dimes. That's in the spring. We are working with Andre House, which is a feed the homeless. We've got a, a day trip there coming up in November. And we work with PBS on their pledge drive, and that will be again in the spring. Very nice. All right, Chucky, can you tell us about your state service partner? Um, mainly North Carolina does just service partner is March of Dimes, but um, I would like to find another organization, not sure what yet, and try to branch out. Helping March of Dimes is great. I love it. But I would like for North Carolina to be more involved like the other states. Awesome. All right, Andrew, do you want to tell us what the great state of Pennsylvania does for service? I would, I would. Um, we've, uh, we have we're such a large state. A lot of our uh, local chapters have their own individual uh, philanthropies that they work with, from National Kidney Foundation to a Wounded Warrior Project, um, National Brain Tum Tumor Society, just to name a few. Um, at the state level, we work pretty extensively with uh, the Ronald McDonald House uh, every year at our state uh, leadership conference. We collect uh, aluminum can tabs and donate them. Last year, I believe we had about 110 or 120 pounds worth of tabs to donate, um, which was fantastic. Uh, and I know they they really appreciate that. Um, but additionally, uh, after uh, we went to NLC this year, and we did a very very strong year last year supporting the March of Dimes, uh, but we came to the conclusion that we could do a lot more to help really uh, emphasize and push that very, very strongly. So that's what we've really focused on this year. We're actually rolling out um, two new sets of awards at our state leadership conference this year for March of Dimes specific service. 
Um, one is for fundraising, so there's a cumulative award for whichever local chapter raises the most money for the March of Dimes, and there's also a per capita award um, for the largest or the most money raised in respect to the number of members that you have in that chapter. And then we're also doing something similar with service hours as well for events and, and other volunteer uh, efforts for the March of Dimes. Um, and those both have a cumulative and a per capita award tied to them as well. So we're really excited to see how well that does. I know some of our local chapters have already been on the ball since they started uh, going back to school a couple months ago. Um, I know our local chapter in the University of Pittsburgh has already is on pace to close to triple the amount of money that they've donated to March of Dimes this year. Um, and we've got plenty of time left to see that go up. So really excited to see what they have in store and what all of our chapters have in store this year. That's that's awesome. Um, that's great to hear triple. So, mm -hmm. um, And the national team and the staff and March of Dimes are just so thankful for all of your contributions towards our national service partner. But I also just want to put in a personal note that it's awesome for all of you to have your own individual state partners as well. You know, service is one of the words that lies upon our crest, and it's great to see that all the states are going strong. All right, we just got a live question from Timothy Chen from River Hill High School in Maryland. Timothy wants to know, sorry guys, this isn't one for you, I think it's one for me. He <laughs> wants to know, how should I register myself and other state officers from my chapter for the state officer track at the NFLC in DC? All right, Timothy, to answer your question, contact your state advisor who is Mr. David Jones, who's also the PD national president, that's the professional division national president, and Mr. Jones will be able to help you register and your other officers for the state officer track. Great question. All right, guys, so uh, we're going to move on into the next part of our agenda. Robert, can we hear you now? Robert. Okay. So the next thing on our agenda is communication. So I'm just going to go over some of the things about using the national website as a tool. How many of you all know about the eLearning Center? You don't have to lie just because we're live. It's one of our most underutilized resources, so I'll just let you all learn about it really quick. If you go to our national website, www.fbla-pbl.org, You'll see it in the little tab right under 5 Beta Lambda. It says eLearning Center. In there are going to be all types of awesome communication tools, like Nick was asking for a training, as well as how to get in mm -hmm. touch with your local PD members, Andrew. So if you do have any questions, or if you want something, or if you've created a document and you want to share it with other state officers, we can get it up on the website right after we just do some checks on it, and we're all set. So. Please challenge your state officers to, you know, send PBLSAC at FBLA.org or PBL Pres, any officer, to send us a document that you think could be beneficial for us, and I promise we'll get it up on the website. We've got a pretty awesome website guide. Also, this is where, for all of you that don't know, you register your membership in the membership section. You all are given a chapter number. Your advisors have that. Kudos to all the states that are already reporting membership. It's looking like it's going to be an outstanding year. Resources that we have available for the state officers. Um, so just so your team knows, we do have the PBL State Officer Boardroom. We're also hosting town halls just like this to provide open communication. And overall, whenever you need a national officer, we're here to help. So don't ever feel afraid to reach out. Um, I love getting questions. It reminds me that I'm here to help you. All right. And then one big thing, hopefully all of you checked your email this week. Uh, the national email blast came out. So that was sent out to everybody that signed up for our national email blast. Next month, each of you will be getting an email from your respective regional vice president, including an awesome story written by your national parliamentarian, Jenna. If you want anything in the email blast, I'm sorry, I forgot to say this. Your regional officers are currently collecting news from your states. 
I'm sure that many of you have already received emails from a regional vice president. News is due by next Thursday, and they may have set another deadline. So make sure that you do contact a regional vice president and submit your updates. That way you can be posted in your regional email blast, and it will also go into the National Archive. All right. So let's learn about some of the different ways that you all communicate as state officers with your state. Robert, can you hear me? Robert's gone. All right, moving on over to Chucky. How do you, how do you and your state officers communicate with the Virgin, with the North Carolina membership? Um, mainly how we communicate is um, we'll use social media. We created a new Facebook page and we have a Twitter and a Facebook um, post link. So anything we post on Twitter will show up on Facebook. And each of our state officers have a hashtag like. NC president, uh, Western Region president, so the members know who um, the posts are coming from so they don't think it's just one person doing all the work. So that's how we communicate a lot. And I have um, multiple people from North Carolina in my phone or on my Facebook. So every now and then if I see them online, I'll try to send them a message. Hey, I miss you at FL, FLDC. How are you doing? How's PBL? So I try to personally um, contact and talk to the members that I have information for. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't North Carolina have a newsletter? Yes, um not sure when the first one is gonna go out. Um Jesse Crump is working on that. But it sh uh, should be going out very soon. Awesome. Alright, so Dylan, how does your state communicate with the members? We have a Facebook page too, which is updated by our VP of Comms, who's Paul Zajac. And we have a LinkedIn page that we're just trying to get running now. Uh, updated, improved website. And we also have a monthly newsletter, which we had the first version go out about two weeks ago. And we'll make sure that everyone gets the idea of LC that's happening on Saturday. Awesome. Awesome. Does anybody have a state communication plan with their membership that's not social media or newsletters? I know Pennsylvania is currently in the process of launching a new completely overhauled from scratch website. Um, we've been working on that for awesome. months and months and months now. We've hit a couple of snags. We were hoping to have it out by the last month. Um, I just got an update earlier today should be out by the end of this weekend. So we're really, really excited to have that um, live, and then we'll be adding more updates and things to it. Um, as time moves along, we'll have some kind of an interactive map where you can check the closest chapter to your location. Um, we'll have different pages wow. for all of our um, local chapters as well to update blog, uh, news, press releases, and things like that. Um, we've been working really hard on that, a whole resources tab for all of the things that we work on at the state level and want to make available, and sometimes we can't get them all out to via email to everyone, um, so we want to make sure that everything's available. So we'll have that up hopefully um, by the end of the weekend, and then we'll be just rolling out updates um, consistently as quickly as we possibly can. Awesome. I'm excited to see the new website. Do you know what the domain will be? Um, it should be papbl.org. Awesome. Um, so anybody that's watching this, make sure to check out papbl.org in the next week or so. Yep. Not right now. We've got the old website up on it. It doesn't look that nice, so we'll, we'll have a, uh, the, the new one probably next week. So definitely do go ahead and take a look. And if you want to look at it now and see what we've done to change it, it's going to be quite a change. So before and after pictures are always nice. Um, a big part of our communication plan here in Virginia um, cir uh, circles pretty much on just plain old email. Um, we've noticed that reaching out to, we've, we've been trying to collect um, emails from both advisors and um, presidents and, and key members um, at our local chapters to, uh, to, assemble, to assemble various emails um, to, to the chapters to encourage them to encourage them to to put their members in in the national database or or what have you um, and and we've had quite a bunch of uh, quite a bit of success um, it's one of those things that if it's not broken why 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 change it um, so we've we've uh, seen some success there 
Yeah. And I noticed to go off of that, something that we've done, because we have so many chapters in Pennsylvania, yeah. it can kind of get a little hectic um, year over year, the amount of turnover that you get between different chapters. Right, right, um, right. So what we've been pushing this year, um, and hopefully in years forward, and we've gotten some of our chapters to start doing this, we really want to get to a point that all of them do it and make our lives a hell of a lot easier. Um, if uh, we had uh, our ch chapters create chapter emails for different state uh -huh. or for their local officers or for the local organization itself that's handed down and passed down year over year. Right, so we right. always know that whenever we're sending something, it's going to be seen. Um, and right. especially depending on um, we've had some advisor turnover with some of our chapters in the right. past year too. Right. Um, so we want to make sure that we're always able to communicate and um, so you don't feel like you're alone if you if you come into your new position and all of a sudden mm -hmm. radio silence is not a good thing so we want to make sure that we're pushing that very heavily. Alright y'all. Well, for those of you that need time, for those of you right now that know all of your social media sites. I'm going to let you all do a shout out after I do mine. So make sure to go to the FBLA PBL National Center on Facebook. And while you're there, you might as well go over there and like PBL National President on Facebook. Or follow me on Twitter at NatPBLPrez. But most importantly, like my Facebook page. And of course, the National Center's Facebook page. Um, and now this is going to be the time that I'm going to let you all shamelessly plug yourselves and your states. So let's start off with Frank. Hey, everyone. So you know what? Let me give you just a quick uh, communications update, if that's all right. Um, so we also have our, uh, and I will get to uh, this whole shameless plug, don't you worry. But um, we do have a website uh, that's been revamped. Uh, and uh, most recently, we do have an FBLA PBL group page where we can uh, you know, shoot quick comments to our FBLA uh, comrades, as you can say, some of our state officers and FBLA, and that's actually been helpful to us in uh, some coordination between the two divisions. Uh, we recently put out an issue of the Publicizer, where we actually interviewed a past Eastern Region Vice President, uh, Usman Ahmed, and uh, that went really well. We also interviewed uh, one of our state FBLA officers, Siren Deleuze, and we asked her, we interviewed her um, and asked her questions on what would get her to join PBL. So if you guys want that information, that's on our state Facebook page, NJPBL, and you can check that on there. And we will be posting that on our state website soon. Other than that, that's my plug for NJPBL. So go check out the Facebook page. Thank you. What's the Facebook page again? Uh, this NJ, is the only thing that you all shamelessly plug. NJ space PDL. And you can be the 239th like if you like it right now. Whoever uh, looks first. Keep refreshing. All right. So, Dylan, this is your time to shamelessly plug Arizona, PBL, and any of your awesome social media outlets. Hey, okay. uh, we're, we're available on azpbl.org. We're also on Facebook as facebook.com stroke azpbl. I know that Paul is working on other outlets and we'll update Facebook when they're available. Awesome. Robert, do you want to give us a shameless plug for Arkansas PBL? Well, you all can go like Arkansas 5 Eta Lambda on Facebook. Just type it into the search bar. I know that they've got some awesome videos that they were making last year. I'm sure that they've got some in the works this year. Before you do that, if you look right above my head, there's a little FBLA PBL flag. Make sure to click that button to subscribe to all National Future Business Leaders of America videos from more town halls like this. But we'll let Nick Western from Virginia do his shameless plugs on Virginia PBL social media. Um, so go ahead and like us at facebook.com slash Virginia Phi Beta Lambda. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Virginia underscore PBL. Um, if you're interested in getting text updates from your state officer team, uh, we'll be posting information about that for, um, momentarily on our Facebook page. And each of our blog posts on our brand new blog 
is uh, posted on our face on our Facebook page. Awesome. So what's the link again to like Virginia Phi Beta Lambda? To like Virginia Phi Beta Lambda on Facebook, it is facebook.com slash Virginia Phi Beta Lambda. One word. Awesome, Nick. Thank you. And Andrew. All right. Uh, for Pennsylvania, you can follow us on Facebook. Go ahead and check us out at Pennsylvania Phi Beta Lambda. It's probably easier to just search it out rather than type the link. Um, you can go and follow us there for updates. Also on Twitter at PA underscore PBL. Um, and we also have an Instagram account at PA PBL. And additionally, our website, which will be up and live hopefully by next week, um, and that is papbl.org, so you can check us out at all those locations. And if you want to follow me, uh, I'll plug myself. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, abdesmond93. So. That's what shameless plugs are for. That's and am I missing anybody on social media? I feel like I missed oh. Chucky. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I um. You can follow North Carolina on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NC Phi Beta Lambda. Um, we'll, fe we'll follow you back on Twitter. And also, something I plan to start doing, I'll act, it'll actually won't get um, put into effect until DC. I plan to start doing like a PBL blog, right? Sort of film behind the scenes, and I plan to do that um, in DC. So that will be coming soon. Awesome. And um, I'll plug myself too. You can follow my personal Twitter at Chucky Van Hoos. Awesome, guys. Um, just a pop question. First one to answer it, I don't know what I'll give you. Maybe I'll send you a poster. <laughs> Who knows the official hashtag that we're using at the National Fall Leadership Conferences go? Hashtag NFLC? No. No, sorry, that's... Do what? What was the question? What is the official hashtag for the National Fall Leadership Conferences? Hashtag NFLC 2014. Awesome. Great job, wow. Nick. Always got to have you. So, while you all are traveling off to the National Fall Leadership Conferences, if you want to see your picture on the screens and on the stage, you need to use hashtag NFLC2014. Great. All right, guys. Just a few competitive event updates for all of those that are watching live. Our new education director, Ms. Carla Bolton, just had her NAP meeting, which was awesome. And I know that you all have been talking, and we have definitely been listening. I have two new competitive events to announce for the 2015 NLC. The first competitive event is, are you ready? Social media campaign. This will be a presentation. The second will be forensic accounting. So, forensic accounting, what they're going to do from what I heard is you're actually going to get a case study the day that you arrive at Nationals. So, that'll be pretty cool. And for all of you accounting majors out there, it seems pretty awesome. So, we're doing a lot more hands-on things. If that's what you want, then you need to go to our site and you can fill out a form of what competitive event you or your state officers would like to see at the 2016 NLC in Atlanta, Georgia. So, are there any fun competitive event updates? Do any of you all do cool state competitions that are not in the National Chapter Management Handbook, which can also be found online? Uh, well, I can jump in for Pennsylvania. I know we uh, just we do a, a, a variation of the Outstanding Chapter Challenge um, in PA, and we just did a complete overhaul of it, and I'll be sending out an update to all of our um, state members and leadership uh, later, probably next week when the website rolls out. So that'll be uh, really interesting. We, it's a full, uh, very multifaceted uh, chapter challenge kind of uh, competition where you uh, compete over, you get different point values for how many professional events you host, um, speakers you bring in, uh, how much money you raise for uh, March of Dimes and then for other uh, charities as well. And there's like 28 different categories. Uh, it's really, really exhaustive. And we've had 
a lot of success with it in previous years, and we're, we're hoping that some of the changes will just spur more activity with that. And then additionally, I spoke earlier about all of the new awards that we have for March of Dimes that we're rolling out this year. Um, some of the chapters are already on board with that, and I'm, I'm really, really excited to see what we all have in store. So that's it from PA. Awesome. So if anybody, you know, not to put anybody on the spot, but um, if you do, like, I know some examples are talent show, scrapbook, so those are mainly unique competitive events. If we don't have any, then we're just going to go on and move on to the next agenda item. Well, I can chime in on that just very briefly. Um, I think what we may do this year is bring back uh, a little workshop we used to do. We used to break up our conference participants, uh, you know, into groups of maybe eight, and we give them a bag of, you know, arts and crafts and tell them to create a product, and then they would come up and have a 10-minute uh, marketing pitch and deliver that product. and. You know, then the event will be judged based on you know the loudest applaud. So something like that, maybe the other chat, state chapters would like to use at their conference. Awesome. Looks like that. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go on a few more updates for those watching live. Let's give a big round of applause to Oklahoma 58 Lambda for taking back the Super Sweeps title. Um, the Super Sweeps is closed. And congratulations, Oklahoma, for doing this. However, let's see if any other states can, if they'll defend their title during nonstop November. Just an FYI, you all are judged on how many chapters are in your state, the percentage of the chapters that are actually competing in Super Sweeps and nonstop November. Nonstop November will be on the site, so it's not too late, state presidents, to battle it out for the top position. <laughs> All right, and then also congratulations to Nebraska FBLA for winning Super Sweeps. So, like I said, nonstop November is right around the corner. I hope to see all of you in the top ten. I know Rhode Island is competing in nonstop November, so watch out, y'all. And now, just a few questions. I'm just looking to see if we have any live questions. All right, so... I'm going to let two people answer this question. Why did you join PBL? This was asked by Candace in Georgia. Yeah. I'll answer it. Um, um, FBLA PBL has always interested me. Um, I've actually known about it probably since I was little. My mom what, taught at a K at school and was an FBLA advisor, so I remember when I was little her going off to the trip. So it always interests me just like you know, going, competing, and then I also joined it because I knew it could help me the job field, interviews, resume building. And so it's been a major part of my life and has a major effect. Um, so I'm glad I've known about it, and it's probably one of the best decisions I've made. Right. Um, I got involved in uh, FBLA PBL five years ago um, because it, it originally it sounded, it, it, it sounded fun, and it sounded like a good experience. And I, that, that just um, every day I'm reminded uh, just how how amazing of an organization we are for the um, for the benefits that we provide to our members um, mm -hmm. and how unique that is among um, among student organizations. I can uh, chime in on that too. Um, a big thing that keeps me in PBL is the fact that we work with the FBLA, which uh, of course I just like personally, you know, uh, acting as a role model for you know the younger students coming up into college. All right, so Dave from Oklahoma asks, a member is contemplating running for state office. Do you have any advice for them? I would say go for it. There's, we all enjoy being state officers. You hear a lot of experience of meeting other people, a lot of public speaking going on, a lot of organization. It doesn't take that much time to, to handle the officer role. and it's fun. That's right. Yeah. I would say the same thing. Um, if you had told me joining um, when I was in the seventh grade that I was going to still be in at Wyoming I was college and I was also going to be the state president, I would have laughed. But, you know, just encourage them. Like, my advisor encouraged me. Like, I'm sure you, you had your advisors encouraging all y'all. 
and it helped, and it's just a wonderful experience. I've got to meet a lot of new people. Definitely get to know the officers who the officers who are already in those positions. Network with them. That's what I would uh, add to that. Yeah, and and make sure I, I think definitely be passionate about the organization. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, you can be the most qualified person and have all the most fantastic ideas, but if you don't have the passion and drive right. to make them happen and really push it, um, that you're not really going to get anywhere. So. Um, Communicate with the current officers. Um, talk to to anyone that's served in the past, uh, and just make sure you, if you're gonna do it, commit to it fully and hit the ground running, and uh, you'll have a fantastic time. It's a great experience. I know I love it, and I'm sure everyone else here that's on this uh, this webinar call right now uh, it feels the exact same way. So absolutely. My advice really is to just jump in and do it. Um, if I had if I had hesitated um, before running for uh, state or or even national offices, um, I probably wouldn't have done it. But but just jumping in with both feet and doing it is um, what really has made all the difference for me. Awesome, Nick. Well, just for those that are watching, and if you are contemplating running for national office to serve on the 2015-2016 PBL team, but don't get too excited because my team's still here. Um, <laughs> if you are interested, please note that out-of-state campaigning can lead to disqualification for running for national office. So if you are thinking about running, you can reach out to a national officer. However, do not reach out to a person outside of your state discussing your campaign politics. But I do challenge absolutely everybody to run. I know running for office is by far one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever done. Um, I loved it so much I did it twice. So I challenge all of you, if you have questions about running for national office, the national officer guides, the national, I'm sorry, the national officer guides will be released in February. So. One last question, and then I think we're going to wrap it up. What does leadership mean? Or actually, Brandy from Oklahoma just tweeted, what are your personal goals as an officer this year? Can anybody help Brandy out and answer that question? Um, so my um, personal goals. You want to go, Nick? Uh, you can go ahead. All right, one of my personal goals is I want to visit as many chapters as possible, especially my hours at work are about to slow down. Um, I've already got a few chapters in mind. I'm going to try to visit, of course, all of the um, chapters on my office, that the schools my officers attend. Also, we've had several new chapters form in um, North Carolina recently, and I um, plan to visit them and just help them out and a few schools start new chapters. So my goal is to just increase chapters and also to increase membership at the local and state level. Awesome. That's actually our number one goal this year as national officers too, is to, to increase membership. So, and of course, we also want to provide more tools and resources for you all. Um, does anybody else have a personal goal that they want to share as a state officer this year? Um, like, this year, one is yeah. to have more people run as state leaders. And so your previous question was apropos. Another is to get more people from Arizona to go to the national uh, leadership conference which this year will be in Chicago, yeah, and that's something I'm going to be pushing at all the conferences, trying to get people to plan a fundraising to go to Chicago. Awesome. Um, I did forget to say one thing. The March of Dimes Mission Lift Grant application is now live, so your local and state chapters can win free money from the National Center for Your Innovative, Pro for your innovative Projects for the March of Dimes. Um, well, guys, it looks like we're about out of time. So the last thing that I'm going to say is thank you all so much for joining me, and thank you for your dedication to our association. Um, the next town hall will be on January. Give me just one moment. The next town hall will be the second week of January, and all of the state advisors, as well as state presidents, you all will be receiving an email within the next four hours, to be honest. So thank you all for tuning in live. Please make sure to like FDLA PBL National Center on Facebook and 
National PBL President on Facebook. And thank you, State Presidents, for all of your hard work. Your National Officer team is here to serve you. And thanks. Have a great day. It was great seeing you, Andy. Just thanks, so you know, guys. the official date of the meeting, uh, January 7th will be the next webinar. Bo, I looked at yes. the message you sent me. January 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join all of your state presidents back here. And if you all ever want to have an informal hangout that's not live, your national officers, they're awesome people. They love Google Hangouts. So. All, right. all right, guys. We're off air. All right. See you all in D.C. All right. Have a good one. All right.